I am a revolutionary. What's that, then, Trevor, man? What's going on? You can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill a revolution. Can, yeah. I, tell, can I tell you something, Daniel Kaluuya? That is my favorite. Let me tell you something, man. It's been a while since I watched a movie. Man, kudos to everyone. Kudos to yourself. Kudos to Lakeith. Kudos to Shaka King. This, this is, yeah, man. I, if I had the Oscars at my house, I would just give them to you now. We don't need to go to the awards. We just take the Oscars, we give them to you now, and you go home and you do whatever you want with them. How are you doing, my dude? I'm going for it, bro. This, this fresh run, speaking about this, no, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. You know when you, you're doing something that you're proud of? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Everyone put everything into that. Everyone put everything into that. So I'm feeling good, man. How are you? I like your hair, man. Thank you very much, man. I'm, I'm ready to join the Black Panther Party. That's what I'm ready to do right Wait, now. Bro, I can see you on the front line with that hairstyle. <laughs> I try to like, feed some kids with a breakfast program right now. <laughs> right there. Oh man, this movie, and, and you, you must be tired, man. You must be running around doing press because everybody should want to speak to you about this film, Judas and the Black Messiah. Like, look, Daniel, you've known for a long time I'm one of your biggest fans, but there, you know, there are things that, you know, even if you love Lionel Messi, there's still a goal that he'll score where you're like, how did he do that? Even if you love Ronaldo, he'll do like a kick where you're like, how did he do that? That's what I feel like you do with your acting is I know how you act. I love how you act. Whether it's Queen and Slim, you know, whether it's Get Out, it doesn't matter what it is. But in this film, in Judas and the Black Messiah, we see a side of not just the Black Panther Party, but Fred Hampton, that I think many people wouldn't know about in American history. Tell me a little bit about the story and why Daniel Kaluuya decided, nah, I, I think I can bring this person to life in a way that a lot of people haven't seen before. Yes, um, yeah, do you know, Chairman Fred, uh, he was, a man of the people, you know? He was uh, in Chicago and he, he became chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party. And it, 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 Ryan and Zinzi Kugel actually pulled me to the side on the Black Panther reshoots and asked me to be a part of it. And when I, I just felt honored, I just felt honored to, that they, they even saw me in that way, you know? It kind of, it's something that came to me. They saw it before I saw it. And, um, and, uh, and then, yeah, I just read the script and I was just like, you know, there's a lot of information about how he died, but there's not a lot of information about how remarkably he lived. You right. Know? That's what it is. It's just like, wow, this this guy lived incredibly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. He, he knew things on a deep, deep, deep level and not only knew them, executed them. He right. Executed though the knowledge and he had original thoughts and then he, he did something about it in a way that was digestible to people that were like him. You know, it's like, there's so much that has to happen there. And he was 20, 21. Right. For this, you know, it's like he was just, I say he's like he's a brilliant mind and a brilliant heart. So for that, it was kind of like, you know, you see, it's kind of like a way to serve something that that was that was articulating stuff that you believed. But also it's that kind of like it was learning about Chairman Fred allowed me to grow as a man. You know, I can only imagine. Of, so and look at my preconceptions, look at my fears and hang ups that I had and kind of grow in order to kind of occupy his words, you know. I think preconceptions is the perfect word because the stories that we've been told about so many historical figures are told by the people who oftentimes either ended their lives prematurely or didn't want them to free the people they were trying to free. I mean, Nelson Mandela was labeled as a terrorist, you know, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was persona non grata with the British. Um, Fred Hampton was no different. And what I love about this story is it doesn't show us a simplistic view of the Black Panther Party, or Fred Hampton. It shows us a holistic view. In this film, though, we go, these were human beings fighting for their rights. And what I loved was how the story talks about how the Black Panther Party built a coalition of Black, White, and Hispanic to fight against oppression. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was the scariest thing to the powers that be, you know, is that, that Chairman Fred had the, uh, the knowledge, the clarity, and the ability to kind of see people from different communities and understand that there were they were more aligned than people would think, especially people that they had conflicts with, which is like the young patriots. You know, you, there's a scene in the film where we go in there and we're greeted with the Confederate flag. Right. You know, and even in conflict, Chairman Fred and the Black Panther Party found points of interest, you know, and that, but not in sacrifice of their love of blackness and love of the black community. Right. Because we live in a day and age, if you join with someone that isn't aligned with you, you feel like you're selling out, you're compromising yourself is that they, that thought wasn't even in their mind. They were, it was all to bolster the love for the community, but they saw that they, um, the, they were, they were, it was better in solidarity than in fragmentation, you know?
I would love to know from your side as Daniel, how did you begin to embody Fred the way that you did? Like, what, what, what did you look for in him that helped you bring him to life in this movie? You know, it is Trevor. I kind of, I was in a space where I would watch his speeches and be aware of how I was feeling as a result of it. You know what I'm saying? And going how I was feeling moved and, 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 and that. So then I was like, oh, my goal is to occupy his spiritual space, that position. Huh. Saying, and go, I want to move the audience in the way that he is moving me at this moment. You know, and I don't really know the words for that feeling that I felt, but I knew I felt it. And I said, I, but I knew I was able to occupy it. And I was like, all right, cool. Let me just go there. Let me have that as my aspiration in terms of this. And, and that's kind of... It's kind of like it's, you're a vessel in those situations. In certain scenes, we're saying his actual words. I mean, you can't help but let the words tell you how to play it. Let the words, words tell you how to be. The voice. Talk me through the voice and how, how important that was. Because I feel like Get Out was all about the eyes. You know, you, 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 you made those eyes come alive. It felt like that was the whole story. And it felt like in this, a lot of Fred is that voice. Yeah, it was the voice was everything um, in 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 approaching it. So then I was when I st started dialect work with Audrey Lacrone, amazing dialect coach. It was a real kind of real challenge. And but also another thing as well, I had to really watch my voice because I'm not um, classically trained. Well, how I arrived to acting was a very raw improv way. Yeah, so I had a tendency when I did plays to kind of just go ah and just lead with emotion, but damage my voice. And I knew on this one I couldn't afford to. You know what I'm saying? Because you're doing 12 hour days with just doing speeches. So Audrey said, yo, you should look into a singing coach. So I found an opera singing coach. Wow. I went down with an opera singing coach. And then um, and then because I just I love the way opera singers commanded the space. Uh -huh. And I saw sonically Chairman Fred felt like that. You yeah. know, how he occupied a room. You know, he, he just occupied it. And um and because of the amount I was doing, I needed to engage my diaphragm and condition my vocal cords for those kind of days. And so I would do gospel songs and I would do songs that felt like Chairman Fred's speeches, then I would do the speeches. And then I was studying cadence because he had a different cadence to when he spoke to a different cadence to when he did speeches. Right, and right. So it's like identifying, defining those differences, but also feeling like the same person. Uh-huh. It's kind of like it was, it was, uh, there was a kind of, but also in it, it was for me, it was what was the speech patterns was like a clue into his thought patterns. Having spent all this time embodying the man, researching him, living in him, uh, you know, recreating that history, what do you think some of the misconceptions are that people have about Fred Hampton that you've learned about him and, 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 and maybe has changed in your mind as well since taking on this role? I, I was blessed enough that I didn't have any preconceptions about um, him, you know? And I didn't have any preconceptions about the Black Pepper Party. I just understood that other people, in order for it, you know, you know like the white fear dressed as hate, in order right, for it, right, it, right. it manifested as like, these people are like killing us. They're terrorists. They're like the Ku Klux Klan, you know? And it's that kind of thing where like, actually I feel like these people were like, had incredible uncompromising love for themselves. And they would, they would guard themselves with guns and they guard their community with guns because, because you're trying to kill us. You know, it's like, if you don't protect your family, like say if someone, a burglar comes into your house and you don't protect your family, what are you saying about yourself? And what are you saying about how you feel about your family? You know, everyone understands that scenario. But I think the black community within America, there's a lot happening. There's these people that are occupying their spaces and oppressing these people and, and black people around the world, you know, oppressing right, black people. Right. If you don't stand up for yourself, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to protect yourself. But it's not only did they protect themselves, they loved themselves. Mm, mm. Into themselves, you know? And the protection was just a manifestation of a form of love, you know? One, one thing that really stood out to me in this film was realizing how people are connected around the globe without even realizing it. And, and when you watch the story of the Black Panthers, they were an international organization. They were here. You know, and they were trying to expand in the U.S., but they, they, commu they, they talked to people from different places around the world and said, you share a struggle that we share, and we want to do this together. How do you think that has factored into, like, how you play these roles and what you think about it? You know, when you, when you look at that shared experience around the globe, because some people might be like, ah, oh, Daniel, you come from England. You, you drink tea all day and you have a, a good life. But th sometimes there's a disconnect, and I feel like the Black Panthers understood that. They would connect with Black from other places to be like, yo, we are all Black and we're all experiencing this oppression in a, in a similar and yet different way. 
And I think that I think Chairman Fred especially understood it was an international struggle, you know. Mm -hmm. And you see in the first speech that he references the Mozambique and Fraley fires, you know. Right, right. He references the, the struggles in Angola. You know, it's like he's, it's, he under, he's connecting the dots. You know, when I was like, um, his points of references were like Yomo Kenyatta. You know, it's like, you, you and you can go on that kind of rabbit hole and go down there and find out all the stuff that's happening there in, in, in terms of how to battle what's happening here and what um, sometimes what pitfalls to look out for. You know, right. some overthrowing actually you're just replacing what was there with a with a black face you know what i'm saying it's like it's and the, it's, the issue is capitalism you know yes and, yes and, and so it's understanding understanding that he, he he they saw it as a as a bigger as a macro point of view you know and they saw right. it as, like they saw it as this is a western construct that's kind of a western virus it's like you know it's like it's like a pandemic you know and um, what's 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 happened to black people and, and the oppression of black people from white fear and white anxiety I hope that everyone sees the film, and then I hope that everyone who's voting sees the film as well, because it deserves every award, award possible. Thank you for creating it. Thank you for being here. I love seeing you again, my friend. Love, man. Appreciate you, my bro.